Welcome to the tutorial on Roo. In this tutorial, we will see that how we can build applications using Spring Roo. Uh, Roo is not a new framework or a new language. It's uh, basically a console-based environment that will help us in building applications in a much faster way. So, before we use Roo, make sure that you have Maven in your environment. So, I have got Maven in my location and then I have downloaded Roo and installed it. The downloading process is very simple which can be followed after you uh, after you download the Roo zip and just uninstall it and put the Roo in the path. The first thing I need to do is actually I'll make a application where let's say we will make a simple user management application. So let's just make me a directory which is like uh, user management. I go to this directory and in this directory I am going to build my application. The first thing to do is to start the Roo console. So it's pretty straightforward. You just type Roo and the Roo console is in front of you. Now to make the application we have a command. We just go and put this command and paste it in the Roo screen. Here you will see that we just specify which is the top level package that we want to use. The moment I I say enter there are a lot of things that happen there if I go back and look from my console inside this user management directory you will see a lot of files generated you will see this pom.xml which basically tells that Roo uses Maven for managing the project environment now let's go ahead and what we will do we will use a simple table and we will build a CRUD operations for this table uh, we will actually build a complete web application for this purpose. Now <coughs> for that we need a persistent provider so we just go and say that uh, we want to use Hibernate as the persistent provider. Roo comes with uh, an option for OpenJP and Eclipse link also. Again you will see the persistence.xml and other artifacts getting generated. Now let's say that we want to have an entity. So to create an entity, basically say entity, uh, the class name uh, which uh, we want to give to the entity and then it can generate the automatic test cases also. Again a lot of things getting generated. Now let's go ahead and look into the kind of things that has got generated. So if I go inside SRC, main, Java. And here you will see I have got a Java class generated and note this Roo annotations. Uh, this is basically used by Roo to manage your environment and Roo generates uh, these other sets of file which are basically aspect J file. Let's just open one and here it's an aspect J file and here it looks pretty much similar to the Java code only thing it is getting managed by Roo so whenever you do any changes these aspect J files are automatically updated now let's go ahead and introduce a field in our entity class so I just uh, let me show another thing so it's it's Roo has a very good uh, hint mechanism so I can just go and say that field field and just say tab so it will give me all the hints I can say string then I say uh, I just put minus minus and click on tab it will give me field name again I say so there is no default right now so you cannot give hint so I give the field name and then I say not null size min 50 now let's go ahead and see how it has changed our class so first thing it has done is now it has made one more aspect j file which contains our getters and setters and then in our user details dot java we have got a field name Similarly, we can introduce a birth date.
and now let's build the web tier for this application so for making the web tier right now we'll do a very straightforward thing we'll just say controller all minus package and we say put it in the web directory so let me just copy and paste okay so now when we go back and see src main web app it has created a whole sorts of file so by default what uh, may, uh, what uh, spring root does is that it uses these set of technologies to build the application uh, it uses tiles for layout uh, we have not uh, put the security right now but se putting security is also very straightforward and once this is done we can just come out of the ruby screen and ask to launch the application it comes with an embedded tomcat and it will use it for building the application So our server is started. We go and hit it in a browser. Localhost 8080. Okay, so here our application is launched we can create new user say let, let me say I'm born yesterday I save it so I need a size of that one so let me just uh, okay I think that, that's fine so basically and then you can list all the users and uh, uh, spring it basically is a spring JS JS is a is in top of dojo and it has all those ajax capabilities uh, built in and it can gracefully reduce also if the javascript environment is not there so now let's see how we can make this application identifiable by eclipse so for that we can just go in the ru environment back and we can say perform eclipse once this is done I can come here and import the application so I browse it go to my workspace projects select the user management and the user management environment is now inside my IDE and I can do my further developments in remove the point of time is also very good in my uh, right click say refactor and push in and then I say ok so now what it has done it has removed all the rule artifacts and pushed everything inside my Java code so you can see that how e how Ru is good in making the rapid application development but be careful about some of the design choices that Ru make especially like uh, it doesn't have service and DAO layers and uh, the entities are very rich entities they themselves contain for example here the entity themselves contain all the finders and everything like that and also with Ru you'll have a lot of aspect J files so if you're comfortable with that one Ru is a good choice to go ahead with thank you very much